in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the fountain of wisdom we bless you we thank you mighty and majestic it is in your light that we see light someone lift up your voice and give god quality thanks tonight lord we thank you Lord, we thank you. Someone give thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth and found that Bamuani Kamaraha. Truly, I have searched and searched all searched and searched all the earth and found that lift your hands lift your voice and let's worship him tonight stand beside you you stand as God all by yourself we extol you and we worship you tonight to him that doeth wonders be all the praise thank you for tonight thank you for the spirit of grace the spirit of wisdom that is in our midst we thank you because we know that you will do us good tonight be glorified for in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen and Amen. God bless you. Good evening and please be seated. Hallelujah. Your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Strength to strength is the heritage of anyone who takes God and his house seriously. Hallelujah. I really want to salute um, the so many of us who are 
doggedly committed, especially over our spiritual growth. Um, spiritual growth is not a gift. You press with intention, you press with determination, you take advantage of the grace that has been given by God and from God and you press. It says, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the second thing I want you to know is that the house of God is not a museum. The house of God is not a cinema center. The house of God is more than um, a recreation center. So when you come to the house of God, you will be enlightened, you will be inspired. I believe in joy and gladness and fun. But it's important for you to know that the house of God is where God dwells. When you want to look for a man, you go to his house. Is that true? Yes. There is no guarantee that you will always find a man in his office. There is no guarantee that you will always find a man in another place, some institution. But there is, there is every guarantee that if you are patient enough, no matter where that man would have gone to, he will eventually return home. Is that true? When you travel out of this nation, for many of us who, you know, your phone will show you different dates and timings. It will tell you um, details from your own time zone and then it will tell you where you are. And when you return home, it will let you know that you are back home. It knows when you come home. So the house of God is not just a place where believers converge. The house of God is where God has covenanted. He said, this is my, the psalmist said, now arise, O God, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, that he covenanted that he will be with them forever. Hallelujah. The presence of God is what makes all the difference. Minus the presence of God, we're just making noise, at best just motivating and inspiring people. But the presence factor is what is responsible for life. Are we together? And the Bible assures us according to Psalm 133 that when we are gathered together, it says, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. That means in the presence of God, you expect to be healed, you expect to be lifted, you expect to be changed. Are we together? That whilst you are seated and the word is coming, is more than mental transformation. There is something happening to your spirit, man. May that be your portion tonight in Jesus' name. So we'll go straight to the business of the night. There is a lot to deal with. And as always, I would request that you pay rapt attention. Jesus spake a parable about the word and he said, The sower went to sow. And we understand from his own interpretation that the word was and is the word of God, the seed now. And as powerful as the word is, the Bible says it fell on four kinds of grounds. Do you know, in studying this scripture, the parable, I just want to buttress on something and we'll get to the word. Um, I've studied it many times in my life, but in my recent study, I became amazed as to why the sower will give even a rocky ground. Any farmer and any sower already knows that there are some soils that there is no need wasting your seed because they will not grow. Yet he gave every ground a chance. When you sow on rock and you sow on thorns, if you are truly a farmer, you should know nothing will come out. But so that he will not be charged with bias, he gave every soil a chance even though it was clear that nothing would come out. That's God for you. Good ground, rocky ground, on thorns and thistles, and gave all of them a chance. And the Bible clearly told us that some produced, others did not. And even among those that produced, there were three levels of harvest, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100. And speaking about the good ground, he said there are those that hear and understand what makes your ground good is those that hear 
and understand that the ones that fell on good ground were the ones who heard the word and then they understood hallelujah so we pray for the grace for the hearing ear tonight in the name of jesus god has declared to us that this is a year of open doors i believe it with all my heart and i'm glad and i rejoice exceedingly in my spirit that many are already experiencing the wave of this prophetic word the word must speak clearly in your life this year amen. if you believe that shout a louder amen. amen so luke chapter 11 will continue our discussion we're discussing we started last week discussing exceeding great and precious promises the goal was to open us up to the power of the promises that have been made available to the believer in Christ and remember I taught you at the first service that when it has to do with opening doors please pay attention that the Bible gives us three three platforms for opening closed doors number one is the use of the right or the correct key not just keys you can use a wrong key the door would still not open and we understand from scripture that keys refer to knowledge are we together number two the art of knocking matthew 7 7 and 8 as it says and you shall it shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock it says and it shall be open unto you for the law in verse 8 says everyone that knocketh it shall be open so one of the ways that doors are open is through the art of knocking and that you must understand what it takes to be able to knock a door are we together there are doors that you may not have the keys to you will need to knock for that door to be open and then number three we said the use of force the supernatural and the power of God what I want to share with you tonight I have watched it lift people from literally nothing and brought them to positions of grace and power i have also watched the neglect of what you are about to learn take people from grace as it were to grass the purpose of the teaching of the word of god is to give us wisdom at the end of any spiritual discussion if you do not have wisdom then it was not the word remember the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man that means there are false lights they carry a semblance of victory they carry a semblance of liberty but you find out that upon engaging them in real life they do not produce any results may you not waste your time chasing shadows in the name of Jesus Christ May you not waste your time acquiring a lot of useless spiritual information only to find out that they are impotent to deliver. That the truths that you find and keep, may they be truths indeed. And the only way you know the truth or the only way you know what is real is when you test it in real life situation. So pay attention tonight. And God is going to be showing us how to knock because there are many doors that stand before us right now and we must know how it is that men, those who know how to knock doors will keep flipping doors open from one dimension to the other. But those who do not understand this can stand stagnated in front of cheap doors sometimes even for many years. Every door that has refused to open Perhaps the door that stands before you, you do not even have access to the key. May the mystery you will be learning tonight cause that door to swing open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Let's go to our text, Luke 11 from verse 5. Luke 11 from verse 5. Opening destiny doors through relationship. Atmosphere 
shift now chains be broken break out holy spirit move now heaven open heaven atmosphere atmosphere that's a prophetic word for someone and five and he said unto them which of you shall have a friend pay attention now and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him friend lend me three loaves uh-huh for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him follow the story carefully now verse 7 and he from within shall answer him and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Are you following the story now? I say unto you that though he will not rise to give him, but because, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And then verse 9 says, in this similitude, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Last verse. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Let's go back to verse 5. And let's begin to observe a few things. Number one, the Bible says, which of you shall have a friend everybody say have a friend so this issue of opening doors is among friends not strangers are we together now when the guy was in trouble he did not run around he went straight to his friend he said which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight that means only a friend can accommodate that level of inconvenience you do not go to a stranger by midnight he will arrest you it is not usual to go and bother and disturb people at midnight, but that there is an advantage that friendship provides that even at uncomfortable situations or at uncomfortable circumstances, rules can be bent over. And the secret is that a friend, he said, who, which of you shall have a friend and then go to that friend at midnight, notice and say unto him, friend, the person in need did not call the one who he wanted him to help by his name, he invoked the relationship. He didn't say, Joseph or Stephen, come out. He said, friend. In other words, under normal circumstances, you should be offended. But I am reminding you that the platform upon which I am making this demand is friendship. Lend me three loaves. Are we learning already? Verse 6. Notice again that the purpose for his meeting his friend is to help honor another friend are we following now there is a reason why the bible is teaching us this you know when you read the bible you have to read by the spirit otherwise you will not see anything there it will be before you yet you will not see it a friend of mine that means someone else too came to me it's not my fault ordinary ordinarily speaking i should be sleeping but someone else inconvenienced me and I had to bend over because of relationship. And so also I have come to you. This friend came from a journey unprepared and he, I don't have anything to give him. But because he's my friend, I will not drive him away. I opened the door of my house to him. But now I am stranded as a person. So I must do the same thing he did too. Are we following now? And then he went to his friend. And he said, friend, sorry for disturbing you this night. Can you open the door for me? Verse 7. The Bible says, and he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. Notice the guy within never called him friend. 
he didn't re reciprocate and say oh my friend you're outside no 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 he was angry and said no please go away trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me I cannot rise and give you now hear what Jesus says verse 8 I say unto you though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend leave the other things that he's talking about that means there are two possibilities here one he can arise and give him because he's his friend is that true and then number two he can arise because of importunity the word importunity there is the word persistence persistence almost to the point of annoyance are we together now so that this door can be opened through friendship and because of friendship two more scriptures and then we'll begin to discuss relationships are very very powerful in proverbs 13 and 20 proverbs 13 and 20 the bible says he that walketh with wise men shall be wise it never said he that is around wise men he that walketh with them are we together that you move as they move he shall be wise that means when the man started the journey he was not wise his friends were wise but he was yet to be wise his secret was that he chose to walk with them and the Bible says he shall be wise that means you can predict the future of that person even though at the point of beginning that journey the person may not yet be wise but because he has chosen to keep a wise relationship the Bible guarantees that he shall be wise but a companion of fools now we don't know whether that companion was wise before we just know that the people around him were fools and the Bible says he shall be destroyed because of it are we together Yes. In Matthew chapter 4, I believe that should be verse 19 or there about either 17 or 19. Jesus beckoned on the disciples and he says, follow me and I will make you. Follow me, 19, and I will make you. I will not make you when you stand from afar. I will not make you when you sit afar wishing. I will only make you when you follow me. Follow me, he says, that is the price for your making. I've taught you here in this house that destiny fulfillment, you may want to write this down, destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections. Destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections let me take it one more time destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections hallelujah so it is impossible to actualize destiny and to make constructive progress in your life ignoring this deep spiritual mystery that is is a master key to opening doors relationships write this down please relationships are bridges to an exceptional life bridges from the word bridge b-r-i-d-g-e-s relationships are bridges to an exceptional life and relationships are also bridges to a life of pain and regret. Oh, I just spotted Pastor Akin. God bless you. Such an honor to have you around. Let's give him a big God bless you. Dear friend and brother, God bless you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together? Relationships are bridges to an exceptional life. That means from where you are, looking at an exceptional life in Christ, a life of kingdom impact, that the bridge that you have to cross to that realm are relationships. And standing before you and a life of pain and regret and destruction, they are also relationships. Relationships are bridges that lead to an exceptional life. Relationships are also bridges 
that lead to a life of pain and regret. Is someone learning? Very, very important information about relationships. Remember, we stated first that destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible except and unless through relationships and strategic connections. Now we're saying that relationships are bridges both to an exceptional life and a life of pain and regret. The last information I'll give you here is that relationships are currencies. It's not new to us in this house, but please write it now with revelation. Relationships are currencies. Like you have dollars, you have pounds, you have naira, and so on and so forth. Relationships are currencies. They can buy what money can buy, and they can buy what money cannot buy relationships are currencies please in the name of jesus christ listen they can buy both what money can buy and where money stops they can go further to buy what money cannot buy for instance money cannot buy you your salvation but a relationship in this case with the lord jesus can make salvation a reality in your life let me announce to you first and foremost dear people of god you know by now but it it bears repeating again that money does not solve every problem are we together i'm not downplaying the relevance of financial resources but it is a miracle for you to find to believe it early that money does not solve every problem are we together relationships are currencies they are currencies my goodness they they have high level purchasing power they can buy what money can buy and they can also buy what money cannot buy i have prayed a prayer for you many times in koinonia and let me pray it again that may you never be so poor that all you have is money Amen. did you get the prayer that may you never be so poor that the only thing you have in your life is money. Men have risen to enviable destinies from very modest and sometimes shameful backgrounds using the leverage of relationships. The Bible, ancient and modern history is full of the autobiography of ordinary men and women who did not have any comeliness to be desired but they meandered across this mystery and through the ladder and the lift of relationships they rose to enviable positions spiritually economically sociologically politically and so on and so forth and the bible and even history is also full of men and women who neglected the power of this mystery of relationships. Some of them threw away relationships to look for money. Men like Judas Iscariot and they lost both. Judas had a relationship and he threw away a valuable relationship to pursue a lesser kind of thing, money. At the end of it, he got the money. But now losing the relationship, the money did not benefit him and he lost both. In fact, he lost everything, including his life. Are we together now? The easiest way to succeed in life and destiny is through relationships. This is, this is a fact. The easiest way to succeed in life and destiny is through relationships. There are many factors that are there in the success equation and all of them are useful and they have their place. But I can tell you few of those factors come close to the excellency of understanding and engaging this mysterious key of relationships. Hallelujah. Are we learning already? For someone, all that I've said alone has been the washing of the water just delivering you 
because there are many people all they see in their dreams while they are awake is money everything they see is money they don't care who lives and who dies the most important thing is let there be money and we have this understanding that our entire life will magically be relevant when we have money may not necessarily be so destinies are enhanced and glorified through relationships my concern for tonight with respect to uh, our discussion using relationships as tools to open doors i want to discuss with you the tripartite dimension of relationships that must be at work in your life for doors to be open this this is our subtopic this is the core point of discussion there there are three three fold dimensions of relationships that if you do not have in your life there is no future for you as far as open doors are concerned number one your relationship with god let's go very quickly we have a lot to discuss the first dimension of relationship you must focus on if you desire relationships to be a tool that open the doors of destiny is your relationship with god matthew chapter 22 please give us from verse 37 we are reading to 40 your relationship with god in that order jesus said unto them thou shalt love the lord thy god help me with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind next verse it says then thou sh this is the first and great commandment 39 it says the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself 40 now on these two hang all the law and the prophets that means every every law that ever came by the prophets the dictates for the nation of israel was to get them to achieve these two things the law for god and the law for men are we together now your relationship with god proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26 a scripture that has become an anthem in my own life my son it says give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways this is god asking not just for your tithe asking not just for your offering no, asking not just for your membership he's looking for your heart are we together now my son he says give me your heart and then let my eyes observe your ways second chronicles 15 second chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12 we're reading 12 to 15 the first dimension of relationship that makes for open doors as far as life and destiny is concerned is your relationship with god the bible says and they entered into a covenant to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart and with all their mind verse 13 that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. 14. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and trumpets and cornets. The last verse now. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. They bound themselves with an oath to seek the Lord. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. Is that in your Bible? And he was found of them. What was the result? And the Lord gave them rest round about. Not just because they were intellectually sound. Not just because they were um, educationally advantaged or sociologically advantaged. They had wealthy parents. The Bible says they bound themselves corporately with an oath. That we will seek the Lord and that anybody that violates this will put that person to death whether child whether adult whether male or female that when God saw the seriousness of their heart to seek him with their everything he gave them rest round about are we learning Matthew 19 26 very powerful scripture I know you've read it but I want you to look at it very carefully but Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible but with God everybody say with God 
there are things that are only possible with God. With God. With God, all things are possible. This is the implication of a healthy relationship with God. It defines the extent of the possibilities that you experience. Do not make a mistake of believing that just because you are saved, it means every possibility will manifest in your life automatically. No, every possibility should manifest as far as the finished work of Christ is concerned. But entering into the experience of it depends on a functional, ever-growing relationship with God. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in this life, there is no one in this life, please listen very carefully, that should sustain the ability to take the place of God in your life and to interrupt your work with God. Anybody that succeeds to do that is the person you should worship because that person has become God. And the jealousy of God will fight anything and anyone that stands his way, even if he's the one that gave you that blessing. I hope you know God can fight what he gave you. The moment what he gave you becomes an interruption to his place and his purposes in your life, it becomes his enemy, just like Satan. God created Satan and he still grants us the grace to perpetually defeat him. He's not forgotten that Satan is his creation. But because Satan has assumed a position where he perpetually cannot bring joy to God again, even though God's creation, he does not secure God's support again. It's important for you to know that God does not just initiate processes. He vets them periodically to find out that he's being glorified through them. And if he stops being glorified through those processes, his, his backing ceases except by the mercy of God. So you will find many people being destroyed by what God gave them. And you'll be wondering, how could God give you a blessing that becomes a destruction? Saul, how could God make you a king and yet that position brings you shame and reproach again? How could you be the anointed cherub that covereth a position God gave you and yet your pride came as a result of that position? Just because God gave you does not mean it to automatically glorify him. You have to be intentional about using everything around your life to see that Jesus is glorified. Are we together now? Thou shalt love the Lord your God. Please look up. There are many believers today who ignore the issue of having a healthy relationship with God. When you say it like this, most believers think it is just a press into fanatism. And they say, you know what, the way me, I serve God, I'm not into all these Jim Jim Christianity, but my own God knows that me, I'm serious. You can never fake seriousness. Seriousness is, is so palpable, it should be known and detected, whether from afar and near. I'm not, I'm prayerful, it's just that it's only God that knows. You are a liar immediately. Are we together now? Yes, sir. So many believers do not intend to take God seriously. They don't, they don't plan to throw him out of their lives, but they just want to keep him just at the minimum level enough to hopefully secure life after death in case, like an insurance, while they go around doing everything they want to do with their lives. And let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen, if you want God to honor you, you want to command power and relevance in our world today in order of priority. This has nothing to do with Pentecostalism or whatever it is. You have to make up your mind. Please listen carefully. Make up your mind that you are going to go all out for God. Some of us, when we started, we did not start with a desire for ministry. We did not start with a desire for fame. In fact, we did not start with a desire for greatness. 
this journey started from a blind and a sincere pursuit lord i love you it's an opportunity and it's a privilege for me to be called your own and while we pressed and gave god literally everything he said so this is how far you can go for me now let me show you how far i can go for you are we together do not covet the result of a genuine lover of god if and when you are not mm -mm. God, why are you doing this to so-so-so person, so-so-so lady, so-so-so ministry? It is a reflection of the depth of their love for God. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Are we still together? No ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has in store for them that love him, not them that use him. Not them that use him for fame. Not those that use him to get publicity for ministry. Not those that use him and climb him as a ladder into a great life. There are many men of God who do not love God. Clearly so. There are many church members who do not love God. There are many business people who do not love God. There are many people with Christian names who do not love God. There are biblical indices that show whether or not you love God. So it is not about blind assumption and saying, I love him, he knows. Mm -mm. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Listen, when you say, God, I love you, you know what he's going to ask you? Let me see what you can give up for me. So be careful when you want to say, God, I love you. We are used to fake love in this, our wicked world, that we think we can play that politics with God. You don't come to him just faking tears and say, I love you. You can roll from left to right, from pillar to post. When you are done loving, he will tell you, all right, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? There are people who would throw God away to protect ministry. There are people who would throw God away to protect their ego. I am a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. There are people who would throw God away. If their money is falling down, they would throw God and hold the money and say, God, you are a miracle worker, rise back. But this money, if it falls, I don't know if it will come back again. There are people who would throw God away and say, my pedigree, I went to school, I read X, Y, Z. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the men and the women that God will do mighty things with in today's world are people who are dead to every other thing. The price for all of God is all of you. You've heard me say it. The price, listen, the price for all of God is more, you will need more than your brain for God to do business with you. The price for God is more than English and preaching. Oh dear one, it takes more than good English to put a generation at the command of heaven. We are discussing relationships now. Hallelujah. There are, Valentine is two days now after now. There are many people whose lives are going to nose dive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but nose dive, they have not even stayed well with God and they look forward, they are planning all kinds of things minus God. They bought flowers, they bought, they, they paid for the venue that they will use and there is no God in that factor. God, I'm used to you interrupting my joy. Stand back. When I need you, I'll come. This one now, look, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is the foolishness of loving God that brought us this far. Never get to a point where you become too intelligent, too Western to become that baby. Hmm. 
Are we together? There are many people right now, it's pedigree and, pest, and prestige that has come to a point where it has replaced God and pushed God out of their lives. You know, when we started, we were poor people, no money, but now we are billionaires, we are talking serious things. My phone can't fall down, my clothes, do you know the amount? And while you talk all that nonsense, the realm of the spirit is watching you. The rich fool in one day came down, his life was even demanded from him. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Your passion for God is not about fanatism and it's not about being a preacher. Do not leave passion for God to just pastors and preachers and say, me, God has called me into entrepreneurship. He knows that I can't love him the way. Who told you that? Go and find out the people who love God as governmental figures like Daniel, as economists like Joseph. They were not preachers. Yet you could not argue their love for God. The question God is asking you right now is Simon Bajona lovest thou me more than this? Because the way many of us are pressing into life, we're ignoring God, we're just satisfied that at least I remember coming out for an altar call and I don't care about anything spiritual. But if we begin to talk about money and business and rising, now you are speaking my language. Some of you, your love language is money. Repent. <laughs> Repent. Now listen, please. Don't, don't, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm serious here teaching. Are we together now? Repent. You are the thirst. You are the street. You are the hunger living inside of me. You are the fool that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Hallelujah. I will keep saying it for as long as I am alive. I will give up koinonia and close it down a thousand times to maintain my relationship with God. Believe me, this is not just a, an empty talk that I'm saying on stage. Are we together? Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world So the first dimension of relationship You want doors to open for you It is with God with God the first dimension of relationship and let me tell you this you are here and you've not encountered the God of the Bible when I make the altar call I want you to run wherever you are just know that this is why Jesus brought you here give us John 17 verse 3 it says and this is eternal life that they may know thee not that they may recite a prayer alone this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Bible one day come out of time I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found Until you get to a point in your life, ladies and gentlemen, where God means everything to you, your love and your passion for Jesus, your love and your passion for the things of the Spirit has consumed you and is above every other desire, then you are not ready for the relationship that opens doors. 
there are men who will stand in an empty space but because of their love for God he will carry a door wherever it is bring it in front of them and open it that is how far he can go he said I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness it's time to return back to your love life thank God that this is a period that is celebrated world over it's a, it's a period of love your first love is not your husband it's not your wife it's not your children it was because of him that they all arrived don't let their presence drive him are we together now Jesus the lover of our soul this is how we started blind sincere honest pursuit for him Lord if you never bless me you still have my all if you never lift me you still have my all not Lord I'm giving you two weeks if you don't move don't blame me all those kinds of things no I love you sincerely it is not about preaching it is not about all of that no the song we sing they all belong to you and even the air I breathe your hands on your head in one minute and repent from every kind of idolatry Lord I don't know what has taken your place in my life the pursuit for things the pursuit for fame the pursuit for money the pursuit for positions cry to the Lord this night oh I return I return oh lover of my soul oh lover of my destiny I return church stole my heart from you marriage stole my heart from you a job stole my heart from you fame stole my heart from you naira and copper and dollars and pounds stole my heart from you but I return someone cry I return I return in the name of Jesus I return Shabrekete pereko skati barus skati prende ke pereko skotu praskiata ay akasa bando shodo prekete beleketa You are praying one more minute Take all of me all of me lord you have my everything take all of me all of me you have my everything and pray father I love you more than ministry I love you more than prophecy I love you more than marriage I love you more than children I love you more than a job I love you more than business excellence I love you more than financial prosperity Someone pray, someone pray, no destruction.
man of God it's time for your love for ministry to go behind the cross and never replace your love for Jesus it's time for your love for fame and power even though carrying the semblance of spirituality to go behind the cross and to see Jesus alone lifted as an expression of your love it's good to excel it's time for your love and your desire for material things to move behind in the queue that nothing and no one should sustain the ability to take his place in your life oh if I perish let me perish loving you if I go forward let me go forward loving you if I mark time let me mark time loving you if I rise let me rise loving you everything I will ever get that will demand my not loving you may it never come hallelujah in the name of Jesus now listen carefully when Jesus started with the disciples who would later be apostles of the Lamb he called them and they became his disciples but as that intimacy grew many things started happening to them one day Jesus said I no longer call you brethren but friends is that in your Bible he was she was telling them something that you have scaled a height you have demonstrated your love you have survived a lot do you know what it means for God to give you a title called the friend of God who in the Bible had that name and what followed the destiny that had that name Abraham was called more than a prayer warrior more than a fasting giant it is a noble title for God to call you his friend because in friendship there are no secrets there is the opening of secrets God can beckon on you shall I hide this from my friend Abraham I can hide this from my creation but not my friend Abraham this is what I want to do let me give you a chance as a friend and Abraham came not just as God's creation but as a friend and say hold on since you have called me your friend allow me to negotiate I have an interest in Sodom and Gomorrah someone who was my friend before but allowed the quest for material things to drive him away because of that friendship remember the guy in the room did not call him friend but the one outside still said for as long as there is one person still carrying that point of connection he said let me advocate for lot perhaps if there are 50 people perhaps if there are 40 people that was a negotiation that was at the table of friendship I am a friend of God I am a friend of God I am a friend of God he calls me friend I didn't call him oh I am a friend of God. how can I dare call him friend the creator of the ends of the earth but I am a friend of God he calls me friend so do not be surprised when you see the benefits of friendship following certain people do not the Bible said there is a friend that stick it closer shall I hide this I don't know who God is speaking to but there are people here tonight God is saying there is a deeper level of friendship come come this nominal Christianity this surface thing here and there dealing with God like an idol like a stranger as if it's a stone carved somewhere we serve God as if we are practicing idolatry there is a functional relationship with proof come 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 there is a river for you come 
God is pushing someone, come. There is a deeper dimension, more than just church, more than just nominal Christianity. It's a deeper dimension like Ezekiel 47. Oh, there is a river. God is calling a man of God. Hold on about ministry and come deeper. You will be more effective when you become my friend. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Moses High, Shema Sema Nadia, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Moses High. Because a friend always answers. When I call you, you will answer me. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. Hear me. There are some of you after this service, you may need to rush and go for a retreat. God is speaking to you. The destiny you are seeing and the level of relationship you are giving God, you can't arrive there. That is not how a prophetic mantle will land on you. That is not how an apostolic call will come. It's not by buying suits and sharing cards. No, there are, there are rivers, ladies and gentlemen. You have to dive deep into the river. Job said there is a, there is a path that no fowl has seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there very deep dimensions of intimacy with God that is where power resides in the spirit that is where rest resides in the spirit in your time just one more minute
declare your desperation. Take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place, that's where I want to be. You are my sheep, you are my covering, you are my stability. And my foundation, take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place, the secret place. That's where I want to be, that's where I want to be, take me to the place, take me to the place. You're not wasting your time. Many of you are wondering what we are doing. This is how intimacy is developed in the spirit. Press for one more minute. Yeshua, Hamashiach, Komina Nakane. Yeshua, Hamashiach. Yeshua, Listen, there is a realm in the spirit where you would have surrendered everything because you love him. When your hands are empty, not holding anything, then he can hold your hands and you will find out that you have everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Our mundane pursuit of things is eroding our passion for God gradually especially this generation with all due respect it is amazing how incredibly distracted we are in pursuit of many things i have learned from scripture i have learned from mentorship from wisdom and by experience that anything that claims to give you what only god can give you just know that you are dealing with fraudulence there any situation anyone who tells you he can give you what only God can give there are things only God can give he said with God all things no amount of publicity will bring increase to your ministry above and beyond the presence and your relationship with God no amount of intellectual soundness will replace the impact of the word that comes at the instance of relationship May God grant us grace to return in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. So the first dimension of relationship is your relationship with God. Ever increasing hunger, passion, fire, love for spiritual things. Number two, what is the second dimension of relationship that is responsible for activating open doors as far as destiny and the purposes of God is concerned? Are you ready? Number two, relationship with men. Relationship with God is number one. Number two, relationship with men. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 
and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. The power of God is coming on four people. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. I saw the number 4. And this is, this is, this is, it's not just you receiving breakthrough or this. It's, it's, it is the cry of the Spirit, crying from within your spirit. God is still telling you, I am still looking for you. I am still looking for you. That pursuit. Let's continue. Relationship with men. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Oh Lord our God, pay attention now. Here comes a very deep mystery. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. It said, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Reading to verse 6. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast ordained strength. Notice what he said. Oh Lord our God, without any man, your name is already excellent. And yet, as excellent as you are, there is something you are looking for that only men can give you. It says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, as excellent and powerful as you are, there is something that the ministry of men does to you. It says, thou hast ordained strength. Because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the psalmist is speaking now, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Here is the part, this scripture rattled me for many, many years. What is man? Men never ask that question. They don't care what is in men. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of? You are already God by yourself. You are already all excellent, needing no support, needing no encouragement. You are not threatened by another kingdom and another force anywhere. But what if the angels were perplexed and the psalm is speaking through by the spirit. What is man? The whole Bible is about your relationship with man. Why do you run around man as though you were vulnerable? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. Is it not an inconvenience for you, O God, to leave heaven and come to the earth? What benefit do you created all? You can create another reality. And ignore this man but what is it about this man that in spite of his sin and deterioration his stubbornness you see the patterns God's people will experience abundance and plenty they will deviate from the part of God they will now be given to the hands of their enemies and they will become slaves for many years and without them crying to God in many regards God himself will now send a prophet to go and tell them I'm still interested in you Oh yeah, come back to me. The psalmist was contemplating and said, God, is it that there is something in men that we don't know? What is it about men? You make it look like without man, you cannot be God. What is man? Here is how I read the scripture many times. What is in man that man himself does not know? Listen carefully. You are about to learn a very deep mystery. You want doors to be opened? We have given God his place. But I must show you the mystery of men. That if you ignore this mystery, you can as well chain yourself and remain there. Because there will be no motion in your life. It's a guarantee that I give you. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou should visit him. Verse 5. It says, thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. The word angels there is the word Elohim. You have crowned him with glory and honor. The same man. Six. It says, Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. 
Is that in your Bible? Thou hast put how many things? Say all things. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Isn't it amazing? You know, every time I have the opportunity of seeing great gadgets, aircrafts, building materials, you see man building skyscrapers that are many, many times his height and he's not threatened by it. Individuals who stand and say they want to build something that will almost reach the sky and they will start building it from one block and one, one construction material and they will actually do it. The wildest of animals on earth have been tamed by man. Hallelujah. I once watched a video, I, I can't even remember how I stumbled across it. A hungry and angry elephant just meandered around the road and some people were moving around, I think in a luxurious bus. And they didn't give him anything and he just went, that nose that looks like it's just, it's, there's nothing there. When I saw what he did to that car, it flogged the car as though you are throwing a piece of paper. And I said, can you imagine how heavy this thing is? He stepped on watermelon like paper and crushed it into pieces one time and yet man can tame it he said what is man that you have put everything under his feet listen carefully God shows so much passion around man but men do not know what is in men that's why we keep losing if God himself the creator of the ends of the earth did not ignore man God is not ashamed to show his vulnerability towards men. He would say things like, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. God is in heaven, yet he will tell you that there are many things I sought for a man. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, you would hear God make statements like that. And I sought for a man. Why will God be seeking for a man? He didn't say, I called for a man. I sought, meaning as God, I kept moving from end to end, looking for a man. If God is looking for men, you better look for men. Because it means there is something in men. If the God of the heavens has not ignored men, I tell you respectfully speaking, it is lack of wisdom for you to ignore men. We live in a world where we pride over self-sufficiency. We live in a world where we are very embarrassed to acknowledge that we are incapacitated and that it will take the impute of other people to make us whole and to make constructive progress. But here is God, the one who is complete, El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one, who declares his vulnerability over man. God all by himself, and yet he will reach down to man to an extent that Jesus came and died, not for himself, for man sinless God are we together let's look at a few scriptures Psalms 115 and verse 16 someone is learning now 115 16 let's read together please one to read the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's uh-huh but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Let me request that we read it one more time. One to go. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. He gave the earth to the children of men. So who are the stewards of the earth now? Men. Get this revelation. That the stewards of earth right now, Satan, listen to me, Satan does not own the earth. Satan is old, only the God of the systems, not the earth. The power of Satan is derived from his partnership with man. Outside of man, Satan cannot wield dominion over the earth. It was not given to him. Are we together now? He controls the systems. The systems now control man. So it makes it look like he's controlling man. But he's the God of the systems. He designed an antichrist system that works upon the minds of men. But dominion was given to men. If you are not a man, you cannot have dominion on earth. Satan cannot have dominion on earth because he's not a man. I've taught you here, remember, let them have dominion. Make reference to it. 
that the condition for being a man is number one you must be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man number two that spirit must be hosted in a material body and that body must be created from the elements that are consistent with this ecosystem so there are other spirits with other spirit bodies from other dimensions they cannot be called men because their bodies were not sourced from the earth are we together now that is why satan and every other spirit has to depend on man for as long as there is one man on earth who is under the influence of this software aeon the thinking pattern of this age it now strengthens satan and he can look like he has dominion over man but you need to understand this god gave the earth to man the heaven of heavens belong to the lord and the earth has he given to the sons of men john chapter 5 please god is speaking to us john chapter 5 we begin our reading from verse 1. pay attention to this story and this after this there was a feast of the jews and jesus went up to jerusalem follow closely now verse 2. give us verse 2 please now there is at jerusalem by the ship by the ship market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches, three. It says, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. Notice what they are waiting for. The Bible says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had isn't it amazing that this was not a parable it actually happened on earth a certain man was there which had an infirmity for how long 38 years what was this man's problem verse 6 when jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he said unto him will thou be made whole he's asking him a question watch the man's reply the impotent man answered and said to him sir i have no man he never said i have no energy my limitation is i have potential to be healed but i'm not connected to any man that can provide a leverage sir in these 38 years i take responsibility i am knowledgeable enough to know that i have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool he said but while i am coming another step it down before me it is logical to assume that that another had a man to help him because based on this scripture men could help men enter the water if men could not help men he would not say i have no man to help me somebody who had a man to help him gave him the leverage and the acceleration to enter the pool first I have no man this is the story of many people please look up why have you not risen till now why has your life not changed till now and the correct answer for many people is I have no man there is nobody I am not con I have not placed value on strategic relationships enough to provide a leverage for my home my company my ministry my business Jesus did not look at him and say you are a liar and you are speaking nonsense. He knew that the man was right. Verse 8. Jesus now looks at him and says you got it right. You have no man. But now here is a man. Rise up. Since you were attentive enough to understand the value of men, I have come as a man. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. I have no man why has Abuja not opened up for you for decades in spite of being born and bred here I have gifts I have degrees but I have no man let me tell you this ladies and gentlemen may I remind you again that all blessings come from God but they come through men to men Please, everybody shout it. Say from God. From God. Through, men. Through men. 
to men. Amen. One more time. Say from God, from God. Through, men, through men to men. men. You can complete this sentence with anything. From God through men to men. That means if God says yes and a man to partner with him says no, yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. It will not manifest here. When God says yes, the spirit, the bride must also say yes for yes to manifest. The spirit and the bride say come. Not the spirit alone. Not the bride alone. Please look up. There are many of us right now who are stranded in life and destiny. And the honest explanation is captured in the story of the man at Bethesda. I have no man. If there was a man, a relationship that could provide a leverage, even though you were knocking by 12 midnight, a friend will come out and give you bread. Are we connecting to the story now? I have no man. I have no friend. I have no helper. Why is ministry stunted like this? That easy things look difficult. I have no man who can mentor me and open me up and show me the dynamics of excelling with integrity. Why are you so financially incapacitated? Because of 10,000, someone in your family is about to lose his life. I have no man that has invested their interest in my family enough to erode this unnecessary pain. Why are you running around? What, how much is the rent? 500,000, 200,000. Why have you not paid it then? I mean, I don't have a job. That is not the right answer. I have no man. There is always a man who is behind the results that men produce by God. Listen carefully. The nation of Israel had God for 430 years. They were still slaves. God was there, but they were still slaves. You thought that because God was there, they would magically go out. 430 years with God. And yet the man who will walk in partnership with God had not showed up. And they remained slaves. Even though there was prophecy to Abraham that their time lapse was 400 years exactly. 30 years was added because of the delay in training the man who would come. Until that man showed up. Moses stands before Pharaoh and says, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. God was saying, now is the time for their exodus. But a man had to stand before Pharaoh. It was not God that appeared before Pharaoh, but he backed the man that he sent. Please look at me. Let me tell you the truth. Your life can be put in indefinite pain, regret, perpetual circles of defeat and lack of fulfillment simply because you have no man no wonder the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor not in the vastness of the palace not in the dexterity of the treasury when you read the book of esther the bible tells us that king ahasuerus was a great king he was king over 127 provinces watch this the kingdom was about to split into two because one man, in this case a woman, Vashti, was going to misbehave in the kingdom. There was no war. The treasuries were not looted. There was no disobedience from the military men. But one woman was about to cause trouble in that kingdom. Men are powerful, more powerful than what you know. Most of us will choose many other things and leave men. Please look up. Do you know that everything you call business or commerce today only finds its value because there is a man? Take all the men on earth out of the earth. Leave all the banks open, including the ATM that does not have money. Leave it with the ATM card. Open up CBN and the vaults. Open everything there. Will it profit you? Are we together now? Yes. Do you know why Cain cried and said, my cause is too great? Something was put upon his life that will make no man to come near him again. That was a punishment. It was not that the beast of the earth would eat him. Something was put upon him and he said, every man that sees me will kill me. And God said, no, I will put a mark upon you. In all of your punishment, I will still give you the benefit of relationship. 
and the Bible says Cain built a city and named it after his son he could have the benefit of relationship and there was a future for him in spite of his rebellion and the curse of God upon him can I tell you all hope is never lost for a man who has a man let me say it again all hope is never lost for a man who has a man by his side in addition to the God of heaven knowing that men are this important why is it that men ignore men why God does not ignore men it is because of arrogance and largely ignorance these are the two major reasons why men have not maximized relationships please ladies and gentlemen pay attention every aspect of this ministry today by the grace of God it is credited to the mercy and the grace of God but through men to men the job that you now have if you are to be honest it came from God but through men to men when you open the door of your company your corporation your superior is not an angel or a spirit sitting down there is a human being who has the power to fight you when you pray for favor you pray with respect to that man sitting there is that true God favor me what is in this man that he cannot increase my pay and God will do something to him and the man will call you you call it answered prayer because the answer was in the hand of a man this leads me to the next the next discussion you have heard me say it and I will repeat it again in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but ladies and gentlemen please hear me knowing that this world is men dependent who loves you matters when you say you need God alone with respect to his sovereignty and power like we discussed and worship earlier on you are right but when you say you need God alone with respect to the overall dynamics of the cosmos you will spend your lifetime learning a bitter and a painful lesson are we together Jesus is on his way to Golgotha as the word incarnate bleeding literally from all the lacerations and the beatings and the wickedness that came from all these people he's on his way and he's weak Jesus falls on the way and if there was no man for Jesus he would have died there I hope you know if Jesus died on the ground he could not be a cause because it is written cost is every man that hangs on a tree not dies on the ground but there was one man Simon of Cyrene who came and lifted the cross for him you thought Jesus would say no this is redemption none of your business you are the sinner I came to save he would have died there he allowed the man to help him while he regained the energy that was left for him to die Jesus needed men when he resurrected after the coronation service in heaven guess what he did he did not go to another planet to rejoice he came back straight to the earth and gathered the men 120 of them and said even though I'm the glorified Christ I still need you come together after 40 to 50 days 10 days now the Holy Ghost is going to be coming I need to teach you certain things and he taught them when the Holy Ghost came he came upon men the gospel of Jesus Christ today continues to advance from nation to nation not just by the will of God alone but through men if you ignore men in your life ladies and gentlemen you will pay a very serious price write this down please write this down you must understand the principles of sustainable relationships you must understand the principles of sustainable relationships you must understand the principles of sustainable relationships in order to excel in your life and destiny you must understand the principles of sustainable relationships a few things about relationships I've done several teachings but then I'll still do them because I'm sharing a few things let's see how far we can go because I need you to get the third dimension 
we have to get it before we close tonight let me share a few things with you about relationships that are very 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 important are you ready praise god the first you already have it down that who hates you does not matter in this kingdom but who likes you matters write this down men men are ladders and men can provide a leverage to your life men are ladders and men can provide a leverage to your life and destiny that means there are systems of advantage the ministry of men men are ladders like you climb a ladder and move from one face and one dimension to the other and that men can provide a leverage to your life and your destiny God will always use men for your rising. Satan will always use men for your falling. God will always use men for your rising. Satan will always use men for your falling or for your destruction. Please do not forget this. God will always use men for your rising. The devil will always use men for your destruction. Write this down. Relationships are investments. Underline the word investments. is one of the key points I want you to get as far as dealing with men is concerned. Relationships are investments. They are not like investments. They are investments. So the next time you are listing all the investments you have, make sure you do not leave relationships outside. How many investments do you have? I have real estate. I have shares with this company. That is all. You made a big mistake. You are in trouble. If I'm the one interviewing you, I will just advise you. I'll say you are in trouble. After this interview, run quickly and go and start making the more superior investment. Man. Are we together? If you tell somebody that men are an investment and he laughs at you, feel sorry for him. Not there so that you don't lose your job, but in your mind. Are we together men are always a leverage that God will use my life is full of stories at several points where God brought men strategic relationships that have made for my personal advancement and the advancement of this vision and every great person here without exception can tell you that their lives changed because of the presence of a man. There are many people who are in pain here and across the globe. They can trace their pain to the presence of men. They didn't have that pain except and unless men came into their lives. So you need to be very, very careful, ladies and gentlemen, knowing that your victory and your defeat is not only God dependent, but it is men dependent. You have to obtain the intelligence to know how to piece to your life the right team, the right sets of men. He that walks with the wise, the Bible says, that he shall be wise himself, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. There are many people who were well behaved, people of character, and they love God until they were introduced to certain men and their lives just went bad there were people who were bad demonic devilish irresponsible but they were introduced to certain men and certain circles you may want to write this no man will ever outgrow the influence that comes from men no man will ever outgrow the influence that comes from men you can never be so mature or too mature that men will stop influencing you. It's not true. You are only given the liberty to choose who influences you. But to say you will not be influenced. No man has immunity against the influence that comes from men. You only have the liberty to choose who influences you. At every given point in your life, there is somebody who is influencing you and there is somebody you are influencing. Hallelujah. 
let me as a way of just passing through it list for you four or five keys i've given it to you before but for the sake of this teaching keys to help you maintain relationships we're not really talking about relationships with men extensively i've done that teaching already you can get it and then there are other series on relationships coming in the future but then let me just quickly put this down you will need it ladies and gentlemen what i'm about to share with you will explain the reason why some of us are painfully lonely we are alone even though we love god look at me please if you are alone and you say everybody hates me is an attack on your mind everybody cannot hate you like that it is a sign that there is a negative energy there is a pungency that comes out of you and let me tell you the truth people love you but like luke 11 they love themselves too the man said i love you but now your friendship is about to become an interruption to my children so stay outside let me protect my children people love you but not when your relationship now becomes an interruption to their lives please pay attention there are some of us who never find friends anywhere there are some of us who find friends but the lifespan of any friendship is not more than one month at the end of one month something must happen go i don't care I've, I've i've always been by myself that's why you see that everything continues to backfire in the name of jesus as i share this let it come as light and deliverance for you amen. shout amen please amen. in the name of jesus great potentials great people there are some of us there is if you are in trouble today god forbid there is nobody you can call that even if it's by midnight, what happened? I'm in trouble. And the person says, not under my watch. You are too valuable. Let me tell you this. If there is nobody in your life who loves you and believes in you enough to be there for you at moments of pain, your life is hanging on a very delicate balance. Before I begin to give you this list, I want you to think for one moment and for those who are following online please participate let me work with your mind now mention in your mind leave the little baby just guide her around she's in the house of god she will have people who will protect her and then there are many other people who unfortunately unfortunately will lose opportunities and will never have you try to touch this little baby for instance in this example and you find out that there are people who will come to help her she cannot talk but she's in the right environment he that walks with the wise will be wise but a companion of fools will be destroyed are we together now is there anyone in your life right now look at me everybody is there anyone in your life right now honestly speaking that you can call and ask for help whether financial help spiritual help and you are sure that if the person has the means the person will respond don't lift your hand think about it if your answer is no please listen twice because your life is in danger right now man of god is there anybody you can call under god not by manipulation and sincerely share your vision with them and the person will say look i'm in a position to provide support of all sorts there are many people who have almost the cause of Cain upon their lives. They move like fugitives in life. Nobody is interested in your life to invest their credibility, their reputation, their resources. Can I tell you, if everybody hates you, the problem is you. It cannot be. Everybody cannot be stupid, demonic. Oh, it's because I love God. My way is different. You are lying. No. No. It, that would be an insult on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Human beings have mastered the art of avoiding trouble and they can discern trouble from afar. And when your life becomes a capture of a plethora of troubles, help the lady now. Please, you can carry her. I only commended her. I didn't say, just carry her gently. If you leave this girl, she will climb up the stage and come and meet me. Koinonia children for you. Hallelujah. Are we together? 
let me share with you a few keys number one if you want to maintain destiny relationships there are a few keys that you must learn number one you must rise above what we call competitive jealousy you will never be able to maintain strategic destiny relationships when you know that you are prone to jealousy and this is not just an issue of spiritualizing it alone there is a psychology to this i have taught you again and i will repeat it it is not unusual to have this struggle around jealousy when you are in an atmosphere where you see results and then you are alienated from it but i advise you you can never maintain strategic relationships until you rise above competitive jealousy there are people who can never be in any circle except they are the leaders there if they are not going to lead and call the shots there they cannot go and sit quietly it is a dangerous mentality we got some of this mentality from culture we got some of this mentality from our past demonic attacks this is why when we come to the house of god we allow the washing of the water and by the word are we together now avoid competitive jealousy let me just give you one scripture on this proverbs 14 30. let's hurry up proverbs 14 30. the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones envy is a terrible thing jealousy so are you the only one who is dressing like this why is it that everybody comes they are greeting so 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 person and leaving me that's always how they are i've faced this since i was born it should be a reason to go for a retreat and say lord the same lord is rich unto all if they have done this to this person i take responsibility it means there is something i do not understand my brother or my sister what is the secret behind the favor of god in your life that i'm not seeing in my life and five minutes of spiritual lecture can deliver you from years of ignorance for someone this is a prophetic word god is giving you making careless assumptions and walking in competitive jealousy will always put you in trouble you see this sadly with preachers you see this with business people you see this in the house of god it shouldn't be in the sky there are no traffic there's room for everybody are we together now number two let's hurry up the second key to maintaining relationships avoid evil speaking slash backbiting you must avoid it i'm teaching you this to empower you you cannot maintain relationships living in an atmosphere that is perpetually about evil speaking and backbiting nobody will accommodate you under that pungent atmosphere for some of you this is why nobody wants to come around your life there is nothing else to say except to gossip there is nothing else to say except to backbite you see i think it was dr miles munro who said losers talk about people are we together mediocres talk about things but great people talk about ideas never allow yourself to be the habitation of gossip and jealousy people come around and say hey there is a gist oh. you mean you've been in this abuja in nigeria and you've not heard do not allow your atmosphere to be the one that accommodates that pungent spirit say amen, amen. you must avoid evil speaking avoid backbiting some of you will talk about everybody and when there is nobody you will talk about yourself because you just have to say something be delivered from it in the name of jesus i'm not being sarcastic i'm helping you listen life will be so easy when you know how to attract and keep strategic relationships i told you relationships are investments this is how to make the investment when your atmosphere becomes conducive you will be surprised at the kinds of people who will gravitate to your life and with them will come every blessing that they carry in their hands when the magi came to jesus they all came together with what they were carrying when a wise man comes he comes with the benefits of his wisdom to your life are we learning now so avoid evil speaking avoid backbiting number three very quickly practice forgiveness and tolerance practice forgiveness and tolerance 
it will be impossible for you to maintain relationships all through your lifetime if you cannot practice forgiveness and tolerance i've taught you here in koinonia the difference between forgiveness and tolerance let me say it that forgiveness has to do with providing pardon to over a default tolerance means accommodating the intrinsic weaknesses of people because it will happen again and again and again for instance if a talkative tells you sorry i will not talk again you don't have to forgive the person you are wasting your time what you need is what tolerance say amen Practice forgiveness. There are some of us, you, you, are, you are angry with everybody, including God. You don't forgive anybody at all. Someone knocks your door four times instead of three times, and that becomes an offense that you carry for 10 years. Where do you know this guy? 1991, he knocked my door four times instead of three times. No. You have to deliver yourself. Listen, listen, while you are laughing, I hope you are paying attention. You must be, when you carry the luggages of hate and bitterness, you are affecting your own life too. Are we together now? Yes. Carrying offense and, and unforgiveness is like swallowing poison and expecting another person to die. If you don't practice tolerance, you will hurt yourself many times because even the best of people who will come to your life will have their limitations. It is, it, is, it is a reality with all men. Are we together now? Looking for perfection is a waste of time. You will never find it. Have you seen someone try to kill a mosquito that is around your face? You may miss the mosquito, but one thing you will never miss is the slap on your face. And then the mosquito comes again. Look for an effective way to kill it. You keep at the end of it. Ten slaps, and yet the mosquito is not dead. That's what many people are doing to their souls. Set yourself free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. My brother did this, my mother did this, one cousin did this. Set yourself free, and it is, it, listen, it's a revelation of a superior way of living. A superior way of living. Are we together now? You want to maintain relationships? You must practice forgiveness and tolerance. Let me give you, can I give you two more? What number are we now? Number four, be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship. Seeing that your relationship is a, a, any kind of relationship. I spoke about Valentine and some of you think I'm against it. I'm not against it. Oh. Go on with your plan as planned. Provided you, you are doing what you are doing in wisdom minus god minus wisdom don't do it are we together now be an active contributor to the growth of the relationship please look at me relationships do not build themselves they are built by the parties involved are we together now yes you this is true for married couples this is true for business relationships. This is true for parents and children. Anybody who does not become an active contributor, there, there's, there's what they call parasitic relationships, where there are people who don't bring anything at all. Are we together? Relationships must be a healthy balance between expectations and contributions. When your expectation in a relationship far outweighs your contribution, you are a selfish person. When your contribution far outweighs your expectation, somebody is being unfair on you. There must be a healthy balance. Are we together? You cannot contribute 1,000 Naira worth of contribution and expect 1 million Naira worth of expectation. That is fraud. Are we together now? It's like giving the bank 1,000 Naira and expecting 10 million tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, there are people, that's how their relationships are. You never can trace the benefit that they bring into the system. If they are workers in church, they will never pay anybody's transport, even as a seed. They don't have anybody's birthday in mind, including their family members. They forget everything. No. 
the only thing they remember is their needs who has something to say me well i just want you to know that things are not really all right for me right now and um, i will appreciate whatever it is that anybody can do because i know that god uses men have you seen people like that the entire conversation is about them and i love you with all my heart everybody but particularly let me speak to you our dear sisters in the lord in the name of Jesus, let me give you counsel. I don't talk so much about this, but let me give you an honest counsel. Throw away some of these garbages that come in from misguided, maybe in social media or what, edit the things that you learn. Are we together? The moment you are in any kind of relationship that makes it all about you, you are already in trouble. Not even our relationship with God is all about him. When we tell him, God, take everything, he says, no, I'm not so selfish. I will make sure that I attend to you also. Are we together now? Don't carry that narrative that is all about you. You find this happen all around and people refuse to be active contributors. So we have business partners. One is just there like a parasite. Are you awake now? May God bless you. God will help you for us eh? in Jesus name. Hear me. Where you do not have any definite value to offer, let your value be gratitude where you do not have anything definite to offer make sure you keep showering that relationship with a lavish expression of gratitude you are a man and you are not doing anything and your wife is working bringing you money all the time and having the unashamedness to look like a fool before you my husband i'm submitting to you including this money children's school fees she's paid it House rent, she's paid it, and you say thanks. No, that's not wisdom. Don't be offended. I'm saying this because I love you. Let me tell you, gratitude is a big contribution in any relationship. Gratitude can equalize even what your value cannot bring. I'm not able to do this, but I'm really grateful. I wouldn't have had the money to buy the fuel, but thank you for stepping in. I really want you to know that I am, I am thoughtful and thankful for what you have done. I think there, there is, um, um, I think it's Yoruba people that do it, that they thank twice. They do that one in the night, and then by the next day, they do it again. Very healthy practice. Do it, do it three times, in fact. In this, in this world, you want, you want people to remember you. I hope someone is learning. Man of God. Someone gives you a hundred million naira as a seed in ministry and you have access to know the person. It's not to worship people, but don't say, I don't care. God provides it. No, no, don't speak like that. You will be poor and you will struggle in ministry. It's a very honest advice. Learn to appreciate people sincerely. Your wife treats you well. Tell her, thank you. Don't say, I paid your dowry already. What is my... No, don't act like that. You're a child of God. Your husband provides and then no matter how wealthy you are train your children to say thank you this entitlement mentality that is destroying africa they pay their school fees they do this teach them to say thank you are we together now yes. thank you to god and thank you to men there are times you can just pick up your phone and begin to thank the people who have contributed greatly or significantly in your life the corporate organizations understand this. This is why they keep excelling. We in the church are masters of taking people for granted. Pastors, I say this respectfully speaking. When God gives you members and workers who love you and labor day and night, seeing that the work is advanced, don't take them for granted. Find every means within your power to say thank you and repeat it again. And for koinonia workers, thank you. Thank you. And I really mean what I'm saying. Thank you. Our global family, thank you. For all of you who are here, thank you. If you are not here, whether I am anointed or not, that's not the issue. It's one thing to be valuable, but it's another thing for people to believe in you enough to invest their credibility, their attention, their resources, their loyalty. Do not take them for granted. Is someone learning? If somebody paints this kind of picture for you, will you under normal circumstances run away from that person? No.
my husband doesn't love me if it's an attack that's all right there's a miracle service coming but under normal under listen listen under normal circumstances find out what is making your husband run away from you you can't come and yell from morning till night shouting calling the man's name remembering in 1999 it was 12 noon you were wearing white i remember plus a dark shirt you and you and the man has returned tired he will go out of the house and go and sleep in the office i knew you were going to go out come back you will still meet me here And for men, let's tame our arrogance and say thank you and be there. Sometimes all these big man is in for nothing. Once you cannot help yourself and people do for you what you cannot do for yourself, be humble enough to acknowledge people. It does not take anything out of you. There are men who would rather say, how are you? I hope you are fine. Your dress is nice than to say thank you. Just say thank you. Men, say it. One more time, say thank you. Koinonia men, say it. Say thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are we learning? So you must be an active contributor to every relationship. Some of you right now, let me tell you this. After service, practice what you just learned now. Think of people who have significantly contributed to your life including your boss that you may say you don't like i just want to appreciate you sir i've learned something i came to church and i was greatly inspired transformation is happening and i've decided to respond just to tell you i'm grateful let me tell you what to expect most of them will not reply that does not mean the effect was not created i'm giving you a teaser so you don't frown and say you see mm -mm. that's how it works they will not reply but the effect has been created the day promotion will come that's when you will know that text added up to your rising there are many people who are grounded today because of ignorance become an active contributor someone helps you gives you say a loan of one million naira and you rise and now you are a big man and then you are going to his house and you buy orange of hundred naira how bad let's be be honest you carry 100 naira orange that you bought just at a junction near his house. The leather is even torn and you wrap, tie it here, tie it here, and you just say, sorry, oh, no, no. Now, politicians understand this. Non-Christians understand this. They are masters of investing into strategic relationship. But church people, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, another advantage is like favor. These things are investment. Start making your investment now. After service, don't match people and push people and run around. You don't know that the person you just push is the doctor that will treat your child if he has malaria. No. Treat people with honor and with dignity. Are we together now? Don't look at someone saying he came for koinonia, he's looking like he's dressed in a rag. He may be wearing rags, but something is happening to his mind. And tomorrow when you see the same son of man in power and glory, you will bite your finger in regret. Is someone learning? Never be part of any kind of relationship where it is all about giving to you and you are not an active contributor. It doesn't have to be money. Give love and support. If someone decides to invest into your life, your children, I just called to say, um, Honorable, just to greet you and to ask how you are doing. I hope everything is fine. My prayers and my blessings are with you in Jesus' name. You have scheduled the season of continuous favor. There are many people, the day you get a text from them is because another request is coming. Calvary greetings. Just to let you know that uh, I am still here. Two minutes later, they just say, sorry, just to let you know, the one million again, the rent, the way you... No, you don't act like that. Don't give people memories of pain when they think about you. If you are learning, shout amen. amen. So my dear brother and my dear sister, this may be one of the reasons why people run away from you. It may also be the reason why no kind of relationship seems to work for you because you are always thinking about what people will give to you or you have very little value and contribution but you have unreasonably high expectation 
believing that everybody will come and give you heaven and earth it doesn't work that way you must become an active contributor to the growth of that relationship your time your resources any kind of leverage you can provide under God let me give you the last key are you learning master kindness and hospitality you want to maintain valuable relationships that translate to open doors as simple as this sounds you will be surprised how many people may not be able to make progress master kindness what is kindness the quality of being friendly generous and considerate that's what we call kindness the quality of being friendly generous and considerate and then master hospitality hospitality is not about cooking food hospitality is built upon an intrinsic desire to see people happy and welcomed let me repeat it again the last key you want to maintain relationships with men master kindness and hospitality please say kindness say hospitality one more time say kindness say hospitality kindness is the quality of being friendly the quality of being generous and the quality of being considerate and then to be hospitable means intrinsically you desire to people see people happy you desire to see people welcomed I give you a guarantee under God you cannot surround yourself with this kind of spiritual and psychological energy and have people run away from you it, it will not happen under normal circumstances many of us are not kind many of us are not hospitable are we together master kindness to your wife to your husband to your children to your superiors to your contemporaries to your subordinates master kindness apostle in our family we don't really give that's all right learn you can learn from today this night learn are we together master kindness say in the name of Jesus say it as a confession in the name of Jesus I declare that kindness begins to walk in my life say it again in the name of Jesus I declare that kindness begins to walk in my life to be kind means to be friendly people should not look at you and say good afternoon and you look at them you size them from head to toe who is your father who is your mother what are you wearing what kind of designer no just go don't do that don't do that don't do that be kind to people let me tell you something i wish i had the time to tell you stories in my life some of the the great helpers in my life have been some of the most unassuming people based on the physical persona if you were to select people you would not go close to those people yet they have profound and tremendous influence and by that that discernment and to be able to communicate honor it provided a leverage that myself and even this ministry is still benefiting from today don't look down on people because of financial status because of educational whatever you may have people that are that match your pedigree to deal with I understand that but make sure that you are kind to everybody God has granted you a car I know you are driving a car of hundred million naira don't hit the guy walking on the road just because you are moving because one day you will buy a car in his company are we together yes and let me tell you ladies and gentlemen when you are starting out in life live your life with honor and dignity provided you are walking the path of righteousness and integrity there should be no shame don't fake your life no one shirt that you have wear it with honor anybody that wants you to wear a designer cloth before they respect you does not deserve to be your friend they are leaving you is it was God ordained to give you peace because you already see that that pathway will lead to destruction it is selfishness personified are we together practice kindness I pray even for myself every time that beyond being an anointed man of God beyond being someone who God has trusted with revelation and leadership 
that at, at a nuclear level, that, that character of kindness uh, and hospitality will come from me, not because I'm a preacher. It is a beautiful way to live. Are we together now? Many of you are not kind. You've not done anything to anybody. There are clothes in your house today that are spoiling. You have outgrown them. You will never use them, yet you will not give it. The pain of giving out new clothes, that's what is paining you. You rather keep it there than to give it to someone. No. Go back home after this meeting. Go and sort the clothes in your wardrobe. Apostle, they are too expensive. Really? For who now? The people Jesus died for? I'm giving you an assignment and for those who are following our global family, decongest your life from a lot of things. Start with your clothes. Go and give somebody. Take 10,000 Naira and say, look, that woman that is always sitting at the side, I'm always seeing her children jumping. Every time they see me, they say, good afternoon, mommy. Those children have been calling you for mommy, calling you mommy for one year. You've never done anything that, that justifies being called mommy. Do it after this service. Give them something and say, look, children, how much is their school fees? 10, 10, 10, 10,000. Okay, I can only do two. Take. Even if it's just one time. Giving is living. There can never be kindness. Listen, there can never be kindness without giving. Some of you, Valentine, right now, your spouse or your friend has bought all kinds of gifts and you don't plan to do anything. All you plan to do is amen. Let me pray for you. Let me tell you if you are in this house, nobody should buy you any gift or anything and then you give them prayer back. You are selfish. Are we together? People should not go out of their way to show you love and care and then you throw it away. It shouldn't be. Some of you have never blessed any man of God that God used to bless your life. You are not kind at all. You receive, you grow, you increase. I'm not asking you to give me money. You know that. But I'm saying it is a practice in your heart. Never be part of any ministry, any church, any man of God, any organization where you are consistently being blessed and lifted and you don't take it as a responsibility to contribute. If you cannot give money, give prayers. If you cannot give prayers, sow the seed of gratitude. Some of you may need to do this to your parents. Did you know that there are many wealthy people around who are millionaires and billionaires and sometimes you see their parents and their conditions back home, maybe in the village, and it's pathetic. Let people rejoice, but human beings. <laughs> say, I am a blessing. I'm not wasting your time. Say it. Say, I am a blessing. <laughs> so whatever you need to correct tonight, if it's an attitude problem, correct it. You are sarcastic, you hate on people, you misbehave, correct it. Okay, Apostle, we are like that in our family, I understand. We don't judge you, but this is where the power of the word comes. Let me tell you, if you do not rise above culture, you may never prevail in certain dimensions. You have to exalt the word of God beyond some of these cultural things. Love the word of God and rise beyond the grip of culture and the limitations that they bring to your mind. Are we together now? God cannot trust you with the destinies of men at a global scale when you are limited in understanding and surrounded with all kinds of prejudices and biases. It doesn't work that way. God gave you five children. Three are your biological children and two may not be your biological children. Maybe I may not say, okay, treat everybody the same, but at least let the two be able to feel the love of genuine parents. Don't humiliate them simply because their parents are dead. No. I made up my mind that everybody under my watch by the grace of God will feel the love of a father without prejudice. Is someone learning? At the end of your life, it's not how many things you have acquired that matters. It's who was able to know the Lord because of you, who was able to smile and find hope. Can I tell you, my dear sister, you cannot become this kind of person and not have one person in your life who loves you enough 
to be around you. My dear brother, you cannot become this kind of person I have described and not have one person who believes in you enough willing to invest their lives. I ask this question again as we finish up this second phase. Who in your life today, man of God, woman of God, businessman, my dear sister, my dear brother, who in your life today have you chosen to invest your time, your resources, your credibility as a sincere way of contributing into relationships? The moment you find out that you are a parasite, only receiving from people, change. Because very soon, you will find out that you are alone. No human being survives an atmosphere with that level of pungency. People want to know that you are an active contributor. Husband and wife, children to their parents, parents to their children, men of God to members, members to men of God, businessmen, CEOs to your, your staff, staff to, to CEOs, you know. All kinds and all cadres make sure that you become active contributors and your relationship will become magnetic. Your persona will be so inviting. Even if people have nothing to tell you, they want to be around you because you become the closest expression of Jesus Christ. Spare me a few minutes and let me touch on the last dimension. Are you ready for it? So we spoke about your relationship with God. Number two, your relationship with men. And I spent a bit of time just stressing on a few things that will help us have effective relationships. Number three, and that will be the final consideration for tonight, your relationship with things. Your relationship with God, number one. Your relationship with men, number two. And then the last dimension of relationship, this is very important. Your relationship with things. Let's consider a few scriptures very quickly and then we will pray. First Timothy chapter 6. We'll begin our reading from verse 17. First Timothy 6. Please write and look very carefully. First Timothy 6 and verse 17. Many of you do not know that there is a way to relate with things. You can relate with things wrongly. The same way you relate with God wrongly, you relate with men wrongly, you can relate with things. Things there mean all kinds of material possessions. There is an art, there is a technology to relating with things in a way that it benefits you and does not leave you miserable. Charge them, it says, that are rich in this world. Please look up that they may not be high-minded. Are you seeing the side effect of wealth and riches? Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. That is already a beautiful scripture. So we are not in confusion as to the fact that God gives us all things to enjoy. Verse 18. That they do good. Is someone learning now? That they use the things that have been given to them to do good and they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Make reference to my teaching the law of seasons. That they may lay hold on eternal life. 20. It says, Timothy, Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. The last verse, 21. It says, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Now, please look up. He's teaching his son in the gospel, Timothy, how to deal with things. He's saying the moment you begin to have access to things, influence, material riches, there are certain things that begin to happen to you. And if you do not know how a spiritual man relates to material things, it can tear you into pieces that at the end of your life, like Judas, the money that you have will not bless you. You will lose the money, lose your relationship with Jesus, and even lose your life. Are we learning? One more scripture. 
first john chapter 2 a popular scripture from verse 15 and 16 first john 2 15 and 16 love not the world the word loved here is the greek word eros lost an ungodly affinity love not the world neither the things are you seeing there now the things that are in the world that means he's not saying don't have cars and houses and things that make your life comfortable the word love there means do not develop an ungodly affinity an affinity that you can kill for money you can kill for things it does not matter if any man love the world in that similitude the love of the father is not in him are we learning Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Please look up. Something begins to happen to men when they start succeeding. I can tell you that. It is easier to become successful than to remain successful. The dynamics of managing things is such that if God does not help you, you will lose your life, your character, your integrity, everything that makes you you intrinsically. You can lose it in the presence of plenty. The misbehavior of the people in Jesus' crusade came after they ate bread. When they were hungry, they behaved themselves. They said, let them sit down. They all sat down. The moment they ate and they were full, they scattered bread all around the crusade ground and left. When they gathered it, it was 12 baskets full. Something happens to men in the midst of plenty. I understand your correct behavior right now because you are probably owing or there's something happening. But when you get to a point where you have plenty, you are not limited by anything. That is when you see the potential that is in the hearts of men. Pride, a haughty spirit and so on and so forth. Please look up. Let me teach you something. The secret to managing things is to never exalt them above Jesus. Number two, understand that every blessing that God gives you is for your comfort, for the revelation of Jesus to help you become a blessing to humanity. Never exalt any material thing above Jesus. Don't have a garage for your car, a safe for your jewelries, and yet not have a place to meet with God. I'm not teaching you to be careless with things but as God blesses you like he has done for many of us and he's doing for many the implication of open doors is that among the many blessings that come to you is plenty for a man of God here maybe you are at a prophetic point in your ministry right now where God is about to expand you and increase you with increase comes the burden of management and correct relationship you can relate wrongly with things by making them God in your life. That was the mistake of the rich fool. He made money his God. There are people, money is their God today. There are people, certificates is their God. There are people, their, their pedigree and whatever it is, is their God. Some of the greatest people I've met in my life are people who are extremely humble, godly, very honoring in the midst of plenty. It is my prayer even for myself that as God continues to help me and show me his mercy that all these things that distract people and produce pride great man of God great this that those things will be far from the corridors of my life say amen for me amen. and I pray the same prayer for you too sincerely let me tell you the truth many of you here have been blessed by God at different levels some of you have been extremely blessed to the glory of God all together we owe ourselves a responsibility. You are a man of God. You are a businessman. You are a millionaire. You are a billionaire. You are watching from across the globe. An owner of conglomerates. Thank God for your achievements. We do not downplay it. But let me tell you, there is a healthy way we relate with things. The believer in Christ has rules of engagement. You don't engage with things as though they are your life. My money. That is the language of an unbeliever my house my car my business i am a millionaire i'm a billionaire 
not just as a confession of the word but just to rub it into people and you demand all kinds of human worship because of it you are relating wrongly if you are blessed you are blessed you don't have to rub it on the faces of people most of the people who do that are just at their infancy into the wealthy place i can tell you people who are established there you know it by the character of stability they they, they use others more superior parameters to command respect not resources are we together it is my prayer i'm saying it again and i'm praying for everybody here sincerely some of us may need to tame our pride and our attitude towards things your life your relationship with god changed many things went wrong in your life when the blessing began to come while you were trekking you were moving no nothing you see one of the ways that you manage things is to remember where he took you from always remember thou shall remember koinonia we are wrapping up do not forget this man of god thou shall remember i still remember the days of infancy of this ministry absolutely nothing blind trust in jesus and that was it i remember one of the major financial blessings that came to this ministry that time was twenty thousand. a lady gave so that we'll buy mat instead of sitting on the ground do not forget where god took you from apostle i'm a billionaire you are not the first you will not be the last and don't be part of the many lessons that 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 others are learning from negatively if god has blessed you and he has helped you enjoy the blessings of god but let your heart and your mind be on jesus that you can push that car you can push all those things, the, the estates and everything. And people look at you and say, ah, man of God, as great as you are, it's as if you don't like good things, Abi. Run away from them. They may be sincere, but they are leading you to the path of, of deception. You're the king of my life. That was why I wrote this song. It was around a Valentine period, just around this period that was when i wrote this song many years ago listen to it. it says king of my life you are my own and i live for you alone you're the king of my life you have my own and i lay my life for you my heart is yours my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life you're the king of my life and houses you're the king of my life beyond ministry businesses you're the king of my life beyond prestige and pedigree listen hear me as the doors begin to open because of this key of relationships make sure you sing this song as you walk through them 
let the doors hear you make your declaration as you walk through the doors of enviable prosperity the blessings of the nation given to you in one day somebody's prayer request of five years been given to you in a moment at the instance of relationship don't just collect it as these doors and the blessings come my final word and let it be my valentine gift to you my dear people is make sure you walk through those doors singing don't sing i will sing it to you dedicated to you now even though to jesus king of my life you are my own and i live for you alone you're the king of my life you have my own and i lay my life for you my heart is yours my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life you're the love of my life walk through the doors of prosperity singing this song walk through the doors of influence singing this song walk through the doors of lifting singing this song when men want to distract you by singing another song that makes you the god of the process respectfully shut them and tell them i was mentored properly before the door opened the song will always be about him the lifting and the accolades and the applause will always be about him I am satisfied that he has made me a beneficiary of these open doors because I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God. You put what you have heard today, you will sit down and watch as though holding a charm. Doors open that you cannot begin to explain. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. By the privilege of God's grace and without any sense of sounding arrogant, I know what I am telling you. What I am teaching you are not calling it device fables you use the door of relationships with God with men and with things you have mastered the art of knocking you will knock on doors and men will open it even if it is by 12 midnight you will meet them and say a friend has come save me from shame and they will say you are a friend indeed here I come with their blessings Many of you will have relationships give you houses you did not build. Many of you will have relationships sponsor your children till university. Many of you will have relationships as a currency give you lands you did not buy. It is true. You don't have to be a Christian to believe the logic and the intelligence of what I'm saying. It is not only a spiritual principle, it is a universal principle. Do not have money alone. Use part of that money to buy relationships. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Write this finally and then we'll pray. Please make sure you write it. Everyone, please write this. This is my final word concluding on this teaching. Are you ready? Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write it down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. The second thing I want you to write, please. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and and favor wisdom and favor in your life as a twin combo will give you access to men and systems men number three now will give you access to resources and influence 
I'm showing you how it works. I'm deconstructing the dynamics of open doors through relationships. That it starts from God. Your relationship with God will give you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor will give you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. You see how it happens. God will give you true riches, wisdom and favor. You trade wisdom and favor and he gives you men, access to the hearts of men. With men in your life will come resources and influence. These are the two things you get from men. And then number four, you now use your resources and the influence to serve God, to bless men, and to live a successful life. That recycles the process again. You use your resources and your influence to serve God, comma, bless men, and to live a successful life. The cycle continues. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and systems. Men will now give you access to resources and influence. When those resources come and the influence that comes through men, you now use it to serve God. You use it to bless men again. You use it to live a successful life. And part of living a successful life is to give you more room and accommodation to maintain and increase your relationship with God. In chemistry, we have, and biology and agriculture, we have all kinds of circles. Water circle, is that true? We have all kinds of things. This is a spiritual circle that I've described for you. If you plunge yourself into this circle, there is no depletion for your life. It is God, wisdom and favor, men and influence, resources. With those resources, you use them as tools to serve God. You use them as tools to bless men. Then you use them as tools to live a successful life. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you by God the art of knocking. This is how we knock doors in life. Show me a man that pays attention to this and I show you a man who has left his current level regardless your background. This is one of the mysteries whose results show instantly. There are mysteries that the results may take time, but I guarantee you this one can speak immediately in your life. Can we pray for two or three minutes? Rise up on your feet. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. We need a move. We're only going to pray one prayer point which will be a combination of everything I just summarized for you. Lord, my relationship with you and let wisdom and favor come from that relationship. And with wisdom and favor, I obtain grace, oh God, to be able to win the heart of men, valuable relationships. And with valuable relationships, oh God, let resources come. And with resources again, the wisdom to serve you, the wisdom to bless my world, to live a successful life. And then it gives me an opportunity to spend time knowing you and building my relationship again. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everywhere, inside, outside, all of the overflow, open your mouth and begin to pray to Jesus.
doors of prosperity open through relationships doors of increase doors of ministry magnificent doors of the anointing just one minute go ahead and pray by this teaching tonight God has shown some of us where we need to make adjustments in our lives opening destiny doors through relationships it says for everyone that knocketh, it shall be open you may not be the one to open it but the other person behind will open the door for you pray that you will never have to confess like the man at Bethesda I have no man God will bring men to your life God will empower you relationships that speak for you at the gates obtain grace obtain grace now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them father i obtain grace to invest in my relationship with you i obtain grace to invest in my relationship with men i obtain grace to carefully and spiritually relate to and with things in a way that it never takes your place in my life For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm going to make an altar call right now very quickly. Please, even if it's just to honor Jesus, let me plead that we minimize movement. It will not take more than two, three minutes and we're out of here. You are here tonight. And whilst you heard me speak, the first dimension of relationship, you know you are found wanting there. In the order of priority, relating with men will not matter much if your relationship with Jesus is found wanting. And then inevitably you will relate wrongly with things in a way that destroys you. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, in this season of love and relationship, I do not want to go back the way I came. I want to make it right with the Lord Jesus. Perhaps you are here, you are saying, I really want to rededicate my life. I've been around church, but I really did not know what I was doing. But now I have heard your word and I want to make it right. Can I tell you, with every sense of love and passion in my heart and our hearts as a family of faith across the globe and in this place, I want you to give me the honor to invite you to come and stand here. I'm going to count one to five, wherever you are. The lover of your soul, the shepherd of your destiny, one who loves you regardless and in spite of, is giving you room to make it right. You can choose to reject him, but he's calling you. Come, I begin my counting now. One, come. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. Pick your Bibles, your bags, everything you came to church with and come. Come. God bless you. Koinonia, let's, let's celebrate them. Come to Jesus. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. Keep clapping. Let's encourage them as they come. Those who are connecting from across the globe, Jesus is calling you. He's giving you a new beginning. Come. Please come. We're wrapping up already. And we're standing here. It's only because you may. My brothers and my sisters, listen, let me tell you. When we come to Jesus sincerely, just as we are, He receives us. We receive of His life. And that begins a new journey 
Some of you are rededicating your life to Jesus. Some of you are making this decision for the first time. There is absolutely nothing to be ashamed and afraid of. I don't know what your life may have been, but I want you to know that he's able to give you a new beginning. And for someone who is following online, watching by way of television, as I lead them to prayer, I want you to join them right where you are. Experience the love of Jesus genuinely and sincerely. Thank you very much for making this noble decision. May I request that you raise your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And please say this from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I declare that I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I receive the life of God. I receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight I go forward ever and backward never the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive grace to live a victorious Christian life amen Please keep your dear hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. They have come making declarations of faith and the Bible declares that as many who will come to him, to you, you will in no wise cast away. I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and that tonight and forever they become bona fide recipients of your life. I declare over you that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your lives. From tonight, you walk in newness of life. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. Please, may I request that you follow our counselors. They will have a word with you very quickly, and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for our precious people? Hallelujah. Now, just one very quick announcement and we're done. Please, for all the workers, Saturday we're having a workers retreat. It will be at Hall 1 at, at the basement right here. So please make sure all heads of department do communicate that to the workers. All workers, Saturday by 8.30 on the dot, we're starting our retreat. So please make sure you plan and avail yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. May the hand of God rest upon you. I declare that this week will be a week of open doors for you. In the name of Jesus. For you and for your loved ones, you will experience the grace of God. No weapon fashioned against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment. In the name of Jesus. And for many who are here, I decree and declare that this week, may God give you uncommon testimonies. In Jesus' name, I pray. May God bless you. Please do spend time with friends, family, spouses, and do enjoy your Valentine. Now with wisdom and with understanding. So we can say happy Valentine. God bless you. And see you next week. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too 
tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.